So we're back for the second video in the Excel Extreme series. And before we get started on the recreation, I want to talk through the scorecard we're going to be recreating and some elements and how I'm going to recreate them in Excel. So over to the left, that list of salespeople, that's a, that looks like a list box, which is one of the form controls in Excel. And then we have the picture of the salesperson. I imagine it's a, the, this picture will change when a new person is selected and that we're going to power through a linked picture in Excel. We have the table set up, which will be set up as regular tables. And then we have the red and green arrows, which you can set up through conditional formatting or custom formatting. But I'm going to be using custom formatting for this video. We have those charts towards the right of the table, which look like, which I'm going to use in cell charts to set up using the rept function. And then right above the tables, there's the speedometer, which like in the previous video, I set up using a combination of a pie chart and a donut chart. And over to the left of that is a line chart that shows the sales performance by month. This is a scorecard that shows sales performance based on the salesperson that I selected. And this shows black, black lines and black markers. But what I'm going to do is to change the marker color so that the month selected, the month selected in that combo box right above the line chart will be highlighted in the chart. I'm not going to rebuild the second combo box which shows manager because it seems repetitive. I mean, there's already a list of the salespeople to the left. Essentially, we're going to need two data tables, one containing the salesperson bio data, their name, gender, seniority, and another one containing their sales performance. And the linkage between the two data tables will be the salesperson name. And we're going to need two years worth of data so that we can model out the year on year trend, which shows up in the percentage change and that last MTD um, row column in the tables. So let's get started. First thing I'm going to do is to um, create the raw data and um, using DOM, I'm creating dummy data using the details of the product and, cut and customer names in the original scorecard and then I'm going to randomize that the same way I did in the last video using a combination of choose and run between function. For the sales rep name, there seems to be a very long list but I'm only going to use 12 names because I already have 12 pictures somewhere in the back end. And then for the dates, I'm randomizing dates in between 1st of August 2018 to 1st of August 2020. For the sales value, I think the cars range between $1,200 to $2,500. So I'm going to use that range as well. Right now, I'm setting up the choose and run between formula that is going to randomize the details, the data that I have set up towards the right. And I'm creating that for all the columns in view. And then I'm dragging that, that out all the way out to 2000 rows. And then just checking that all the data is in as expected and formatting the dates so that it is um, back to date format. Over to the pictures. I've already set up some of the pictures. So I'm just going to walk through how I set up the last two. I got these pictures from unslash.com. And what I'm doing now is I'm reshaping the picture so that they fit neatly into one cell, one cell per picture. And then I'm going to grab the sales rep names, the 12 names, and I'm going to rename name each cell for each for each of the sales rep names that we have in the table. And that's what I'm doing. I'm ensuring each of those cells that contain the pictures have one name. And then I'm using the first name and the first name, which I'm going to extract the same way I did in the previous video. Now over to the front end view. I'm starting with building the list box. And the list that is going to show up in the list box, I'm setting that up in a new sheet called the calculation sheet. And then I'm connecting that list to the list box and I'm reshaping the list, list box. The next thing I'm doing is trying to create placeholders for the pictures, trying to set up the tables, the data that shows up, the bio data that shows up right below the picture and um, reshaping a lot of columns so that it all fits in and it looks as aligned as it does in the original view and i'm making reference to the original view to be sure that i've gotten a, right next to the original table i set up the bio data table will contain the names of all the sales rep the gender nationality age seniority again randomized data still on creating the placeholders for 
the speedometer and for the line charts and then i'm creating placeholders for the install charts as well that marker i am using it for guidance and i'll delete it as time goes on now i'm creating the combo box the combo box is also a form control just like the list box and to set it up you right click it you can click format controls and then you select the range that it's going to be populated in there and then you select a link to it now i'm formatting the titles of the different sections the salesperson scorecard personal information total sales and i'm going ahead now to set up the index an index function that brings in the name of the selected salesperson once I've done that, I go on to the table and then I use the VLOOKUP function to bring in the bio data for the selected person. So this VLOOKUP is running from the name showing up in that cell B3. And for whatever name that has been selected, it uses the VLOOKUP function to bring the gender, birth, the age for that person. Now I'm going on to create a new column that is going to be feed into the combo box. And this column will contain the year and month information. I've set that up and now I'm going to connect the combo box to it. I just checked that it's connected. I made a decision not to use pivot tables for this um, scorecard, and I think this is the longer and harder route. The pivot tables just make everything easier. And I'm now going to have to use form controls and a combination of many formula to get all the data in the right place first set of formula i'm using the transpose formula to get the data i've set up in a horizontal order and now i'm setting up what i call a master formula this master formula i'm taking my time to set it up because it is a complex sum if function and that sum if function it checks for what the sales value will be when the product highlighted the date highlighted and the salesperson selected are the same and one i once i set up that master formula i'm going to drag it out all the way and drag it out downwards and drag it out to the right and it's going to work perfectly so i'm taking my time to create it and to ensure that it works perfectly and once i create it i go to the back end to check test it out to make sure that the number that is coming in corresponds to the number on the data table and once I've confirmed that it works just the way it should, I'm going to copy that formula all the way out, drag that formula all the way out into the other columns. Now I'm copying that same formula into the customer area to bring in the customer information. And I just go step into the formula to change the reference to product to customer, changing the range of the product and changing the, the cell that it's pointing to as well. And then once I, I, I'm, I'm confident about the formula I'm creating because I'm taking time to spot check the numbers that are coming out with the back end to be sure that they correspond with middle end the calculation page once that is set up i now start to bring in the months the selected month data and i'm going to use an index function i'm creating the range for the index formula and index formula takes in the total range then it asks for the column the row number which and it asks for the row number and that row number i'm using the match function to get that out the row number is going to be based on the product in view and then the column is going to be based on the month in view so that's uh, another complex formula i had to set up i would not i would not have needed all this complex formula if i had gone the pivot table route but hey I'm here now and I have to figure out the kind of formula that will bring in the information I need. There are definitely easier ways to do this. Now I've set it up and then I'm wrapping the formulas with Etheral. Now I'm setting up the percentage change formula as well, which I'm using a simple approach, which is just the current minus the previous all over the previous and um, multiply by 100 to set it up as a percentage. So I drag that out and then I go on ahead to set up that same formula for the customer table, the by customer table. On to the triangle setup. I'm using a combination of web dings and custom formatting. 
and the web dings brings in web dings brings in symbols it will give me an up, uh, upward facing arrow and a downward facing arrow for number five and number six respectively and then what i then do is um after i set that up i then step into the con custom formatting and i create a customized format that um, works with the rule that if the number is equal to five give change the font color to green and if it's equal to six change the font color to red and that's what it does and once that is set up i'll just go ahead and then change the font type to web dings which then brings in the triangle the upward facing triangle and downward facing, tri facing triangle and once i set that up one time i just use the format filter to bring it into the other table now I'm setting up the incel chart and I'm using the condition of rept. From the original scorecard, the rept is bringing in the current month. So the rept is, I said, I initially set it up to calculate directly um, the, the value in the current month. But then I noticed that the charts were extending outside the cell. So I divided it. I made sure all of them were divided by 20 or by 50. I kept on modulating just so that all the charts stay within the cell but are still reflecting the variance by the different customer and the different product categories. Now I'm bringing in, I'm calculating the sales. I'm calculating on the front end, but I really try to avoid using um, formulas on the visual layer. So I have calculated it there, but I'm still going to transfer that formula to the back end. Now I'm trying to set up uh, the table that will compute the month on month trend and then that is just computing the total sales by month and i'm creating uh, adjusting the axis so that it reads 35k 50k just the way it reads in the original um, version of the scorecard once i do that i move on to i mentioned that i was going to set up this chart so that the current month is highlighted with a different color of the marker and to do that, I'm going to go back to the back end and create another series. And that series is going to run with a formula that returns an any error if the current month is not selected. And then when I connect that series to the chart, what it does is that it mills out that sum number if the current month is not selected. I have connected it to the chart and then you can see that it has brought it out with an orange marker. And when I flip the chart around, you would see that the orange marker moves with each selected month. Now I'm connecting the linked picture. And then, unlike the previous video where the, the first names were was to the left, in this one, the first name is to the right. So I'm going to use the right function to bring it out. And it's the same indirect um, and extract to find from indirect wrap get a right function finding the space in between finding the comma in between using the comma in between to extract the name and then um, converting the name that is extracted using indirect to the named range set that up as well The thing about indirect is indirect functions, the dynamic ranges is I like to set it up in the workbook first so that when these errors, this kind of errors, the ones that are coming up pop up, I'm able to investigate the source. So finally it's connected and I have the pictures, the links picture working, but it's come it's come with a border. So I'm going to go back to the picture page and remove the grid lines so that when the picture comes in, it doesn't come with those grid lines. So the picture is set up. I'm moving over to the back end to start working on the month to dates. This required a lot of a, a lot of work around because I I, I use the logic of um, using the first month of each of the years that we have, and I found that the column using the column of the first month of each of the years we have, and I've created that column index table to return those columns. So the month to date will be computed from the first month of the column to the month selected. And then that table is going to run on a VLOOKUP that identifies the year of the current of the selected month. So it's um, yet another complex formula, but I could speak through the logic in more detail 
if um, I get demand to explain the logic behind the formula. But what it's doing is it's trying to define a dynamic range to sum the month total month sales, and that range is going to I'm using the address function to identify the column is going to start from and the column is going to end in to create that dynamic range for summing up the month's performance. Now I've moved on to the speedometer to set up the um, speedometer and then I'm creating what I typically create uh, a pie chart that is going to have five data points. The biggest point which is the buffer area because it's a half circle chart the buffer area is 50% of the total number and then it's spread out. Now I'm manually spreading out the numbers of the other four points so that they align with what is in the original dashboard. And then I'm going up, up. once I identify that, um, that it looks as close as possible, I have moved it to the front end and I'm, then I'm recoloring it and just reshaping it so that it looks closer to what is in the original dashboard, what is in the original scorecard. I just spent some time positioning it because I remember that there's supposed to be some text and at this stage I remember that I have not tried to compute the quarter to date but I'm just going to move on ahead and use only month to date and year to date um, values in that section and now what I'm doing is moving everything to the back end so that it's neater And when I was setting up the percentage change for the month to date and year to date, I realized there wasn't enough space on the front end. So I went to set stuff in the back end and then I brought it to the front end using a linked picture. The reason why I use the linked picture is because it's so that it can update when the data at the back end updates. And now I'm setting up the um, pie chart for the marker. Again, I use uh, buffer areas. I use a pie chart with four data points, three as buffer areas, and um, one for the marker itself. I, I also noticed that some of the text was not formatting the way I wanted, so I wrapped it out with wrapped it them around with a text function to get the exact format style I wanted. To set up the marker. I had to make an assumption on what the target is because that speedometer is running with the assumption of a set target. I used the data that had been generated to identify a sales target of 400,000 and I created the pie chart. I made assumptions on, on the numbers and then I used those numbers to create the assumptions for the pie chart as well. Just like I did, I um, set up the pie chart to ensure that everything adds up to a total of 100, the buffer area being 50% and the rest spread out across the remaining 50. Now I've set up the pie chart, I remove the, I make the other areas blank in color, I make the marker um, segment black and then I'm testing it to be sure that it works and it works. So there it is, all done. Um, the scorecard is finished and the scorecard looks like it's supposed to look and works like it's supposed to work. Like I mentioned earlier, this would have been an easier journey if I had taken the pivot table route, but it was a good opportunity to explore some of those lesser known functions in Excel like write and text and address and get them together to bring this scorecard to reality. This scorecard involved usage of form controls, link pictures, custom formatting, and um, and if you're interested in finding out more about them, you can check out my upcoming Excel course, Seven Killer Features. I'm going to teach you how to use those features in Excel and more. So that's it. Thanks for watching, and click the subscribe button if you haven't yet, so that you can get notified when the next Excel Extreme video is up.